What's up, everybody? Starfield is locked and loaded on my Xbox Series X. And for many other people, they are also prepped and ready. The preloads started yesterday, which is just simply amazing, which is exactly two weeks essentially out from when the Head Start Access is going live. Unless I'm mistaken, I believe it's like, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not looking at anything right now, but I think around 5 p.m. Pacific on the 31st is when the Head Start Access goes live for those of us with the Premium Edition. So we're locked and loaded. Yesterday was the two-week mark um, from us being able to start. And I, for one, cannot be more excited. I have been having a ton of fun in Baldur's Gate 3. It is an amazing game. Larian Studios pulled something off that was unprecedented in my mind. Um, a, like Being able to launch a game in the modern era and take the world by storm, despite the fact that it has tons of bugs in it, and it's it's you know it still has all the bugs that all other games launch with, right? But for some reason, people are turning a blind eye to it. It's a really interesting thing. We're discussing that in another video tomorrow, so make sure to tune in for that. But in the meantime, the big thing I want to talk about is that Starfield is preloaded, ready to go on my Xbox. Uh, I can't wait to dive in. Also, um, the art book that came with the Premium Edition, I cannot wait to sink my teeth into that because I'm definitely going to be reviewing that here on my channel and taking a look at that. And for the first time in a very long time, I know my brother uh, sent me um, a, a YouTube video, or I forget what it was yesterday, like the Baldur's Gate 3 Collector's Edition. And I know like Bubblonia has the, uh, he got the, the Collector's Edition for Starfield. Um, I, I find myself wanting to get Collector's Editions for the first time in a long time, but I'm also, we're not collecting anything at our house right now because we have a homestead and it's just, it's humid where we live and there's issues with termites and, and, and moisture and all this other stuff, but it's not a conducive environment for collector stuff. So I'm happy with digital. I've been digital only for like, I want to say, honestly, I think I threw my checkbook out around 2007 ish uh, i was around the time i shut down my construction company sold all my tools sold my truck you know got rid of a checkbook and i went paperless i went just 100 percent digital so i've been completely digital now for however many years that's been i don't do math 15 16 years um it's been a hot minute and i have no regrets about being only digital um so i'm very happy uh with everything that starfield has produced in terms of the premium edition um in terms of getting art books and everything else and that's all preloaded and ready to go on my xbox i also think that this is the one of the first times i think in a very long time where and, and this might also just be the evolution of who I am as a gamer because back in the day, you know, when I was just a gamer, and I say this <laughs> ironically, just a gamer, um, the launch of a game was a big deal. But as a content creator, a launch of a game is an even bigger deal, especially when it's a big game. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 did some amazing things for my channel. Um, Diablo 4 was on the map. It, it, there was definitely a blip for, for Diablo 4. Um, but Baldur's Gate 3 rocketed my channel up, and I'm very grateful for that. And it's pretty amazing to see the continued support and growth for everything that Larian Studios has done. But Starfield is one of those games where even if the traffic's not as good as Baldur's Gate 3, I'm still going to play the hell out of this game because it has everything I want out of it. Um, I'm a big fan of space exploration as a whole. I've got a video coming out on Sunday. <clears throat> excuse me, which talks about my plans for Starfield launch. And I go into a lot of the comparisons between like the early explorers who were on ships and sailing out into the oceans, into the unknown. There be dragons. You don't know the seas. You don't know the winds. You don't know the weather cycles. You don't know if there's supplies along the way. You just have to hope. And that's that's the same thing here but on a much broader scale because we're not just dealing with a single planet we're dealing with the stars and lots of planets and i'm not going to get into the whole debate about the thousand planets thing because it doesn't matter to me it doesn't those planets are there to explore and to put you know outposts on and to see things that other people have never seen and to go places and with the way they're doing things with the um permutations of the planets and everything else 
everybody's going to be getting a slightly different version of things when it comes to those thousand planets. But for me, I think the most important thing is that constellation group storyline. And I was really satisfied in the AMA the other did uh, the other day in their Discord channel. Although that format was horrible, don't ever do that again, Bethesda, please. That was a horrific format for a Q&A. Please just do it live. Just have your guys on camera like this, answering questions to the community. The whole typing thing was ridiculous. Um, there wasn't a ton of stuff in that AMA that piqued my interest, but the one thing that did was the fact that they talked about the focus on the Constellation group and how they've really focused on making sure that they have really good storylines around the Constellation group and voice actors and talent and everything else. And I think that's a very important thing to understand is that at the core of what Starfield is, it's still a single-player linear RPG. Yes, there are things you can go off and do, but this isn't Baldur's Gate 3 with thousands of permutations of things you can do there are permutations but for the most part it is a game that has a fairly linear storyline if you've ever played any of bethesda's previous games like you know skyrim oblivion so on and so forth um i think you're going to already understand where they're coming for also fallout games um they focus on having a, a, a central storyline with side quests that you can go off and do from there. It's the same thing that, like, you know, Assassin's Creed games do or the God of War games in recent years do, where you have a central storyline that's going to give you 50, 60, 70 hours of gameplay and then, you know, side quests from there. What's up, everybody? Quick commercial break here to give a shout out to our guild champions, who are the highest tier memberships here on YouTube: Ancient Entity, Assassin Gamer 94, Bubblonia Rising, Crazy's Relative, Mujin, and Remedy. Thanks so much for the highest tier membership, and thanks to all of the members who support the channel because you keep me doing this full time. You too can become a supporter if you're new here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. Join as a member. There's three different tiers. We do lots of special stuff: private polls, private videos. Videos, you get a shout out if you're the highest tier membership, but you can also do one off uh, donations in the form of super chats on any live stream or premiere you see, and of course, super thanks on any upload or YouTube short. Whatever you can contribute, it's great, keeps me on the air full time, keeps the cats fed, keeps the homestead running. Anyway, back to the video, everybody. And I'm happy with that. Not every game needs to replicate what Baldur's Gate 3 is doing in terms of. This ridiculous amount of like permutations and all the things that you can do, which is a little crazy and ridiculous when you sit down and think about it. But it's also amazingly fun to play through from a, you know, gamer's standpoint. But what gets me most about Starfield is that Constellation Group storyline. I want to know more. We, we, we looked at the timeline that they uh, published on their website on Bethesda's website a, uh, a few days ago, maybe like a week ago. Um, and when we were going through that timeline, one of the things I didn't didn't know until I saw the timeline was the fact that the Constellation Group has not actively been investigating the relic they found until like just before the game starts. Like they dug the relic out of storage and they've started looking into it. And it's the only relic they have as far as I'm aware, um, at least from the timeline storyline, which means you are going to be an active part in helping the Constellation Group find more artifacts. And I've seen a couple of people who have made comments like, well, I don't want to join the Constellation Group. I want to go off and do my own thing. This is not an open world RPG. This is a linear game. It's like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Jedi Fallen Order, God of War, Ragnarok, Valhalla, you know, all those games. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a different game, sorry. <laughs> but God of War, Ragnarok, and the ones just before that. Linear games that have a storyline. You are meant to play through that storyline. This is not something that's open world, thousands of permutations, go do what you want, sandbox MMORPG. This is not that game. This is a, here's our story. And I love the fact that in the AMA they told people this. They said, you're very much exploring in our universe and in the story that we've created for you to explore and there are things that you can do that will vary depending on your playthrough so there's definitely some replayability there but the core of it is always going to be we are here to help the constellation group figure out what this relic is and progress that storyline and i've talked about this in previous videos i'm super excited for where this is going to go for the expansions, for the DLC, and more importantly, for the next game, second game, potentially a third game. I It's been a month or two since I said this, but I'm very much looking forward to Starfield being one of the franchises that carries me through into my twilight years, which I am approaching. Not quite yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle, <laughs> you know? But if, if they take six to eight years between 
between games, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, in my early forties right now, which means I'll be 50 by the time the next games comes out. And then I'll be in my late fifties, early sixties when the third game comes out. And if they keep going beyond that, I mean, Elder Scrolls is coming up on its sixth game at some point in the future. So, um, I like the idea of good storylines that carry me forward, good RPGs where I can play a character within someone else's world and and follow a defined path with some variation. I'm okay with that. I like that. It's one of the reasons I love watching films because I know the journey. Like we're going to get a linear journey from point A to point B. I don't need every game that I play to be this huge open world experience. There's time and place for all those things. Anyway, I'm rambling. It's preloaded on my Xbox. We're a couple weeks out from launch. I'm super excited. Hopefully you're all excited. I cannot wait for this game to drop. Um, love to hear your thoughts. Drop them down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Don't forget, daily streams at 11 a.m. Discord's down below if you want to click the links. Support if you can with memberships and beyond, and I'll see everybody in the next video. Until then, safe gaming, everybody.